the object of Taxi Chronicles to sell our real riders with real stories, share their experience and enhance your life. So sit back and enjoy the journey. Morning, morning, morning. Yes, we're back with another episode of Another Rider. It's going to be a quick one today. Have you ever heard of a game called Yu- Yu-Gi-Oh? Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh. Right. This guy <laughs> is a master at it. He's going to tell us all about it, what you do, what you don't do. Over to you, my friend. Tell us about the game. Okay, Yu-Gi-Oh, it's a game originating from Japan. A lot more of the audience recognise something like Pokemon. That's the more popular game. Especially over coronavirus lockdown time, you know, there's a lot of value where people were selling it. Big YouTubers were selling cards. And this is just one of them other games that you can go into tournaments. You know, I've travelled like across the country, gone to tournaments before. You know, big big tournament in the London Excel Centre where they have Comic-Con in October. They used to do the Yu-Gi-Oh! Championship Series, big two-day event, you know, big so prize pool at the end. London Excel, that's that, that means there's a lot of money involved in yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, you have thousands of people go to these events. So let's just break this down now. That's the way we talk about money now, we need to understand. Okay, so you got, is it like baseball cards? Yeah, so it's a card game where you and your opponent, you have a life score and the Kind of the goal is to establish monsters, use spells and trap cards to boost your monsters and help you in the game to attack into your opponent. So it is very so dominating in that sense. Where every you, card has got a monster on or mm, something on. There are the monsters that you use to attack and then the other cards that you use to boost your strategy and take down your opponent's okay, strategy. Okay, so he will, your opponent will read a card. I've got monster zod and he's got this power or this whatever yep and then you'll pull out a card to rival that yes and then if you win that do you take his card no i wish it was there was at one point especially earlier games more the beginning of the actual game some places used to do that rule and people would get into scraps and get into fights because really? people would try to take the most expensive card but there's value to this game you know I've got a buddy of mine called Robert who has a YouTube channel. I won't shout it out because this is your time. No, no, Ch- shout out because uh, my mate Absolute Duelist. Um, all right, do you want to spell that as well? Literally, as it sounds, Absolute Duelist, all one word. Okay. He will. He's been in the game a lot longer than me, and like, he will back. There's a lot of value in these cards. So, like for myself, I've got some valuable cards. He's full of amazingly valuable cards. How much? What's the most expensive card you own? Most expensive one I own is over a thousand pounds. Really? Yeah, no lie. One, that's not even an A5 piece of paper. No, it's literally a little bit of cardboard. Like a, like a cigarette a, a box. Size, yeah, the size of a cigarette box. And it's a grand. Yeah, ah. 1300 to be exact. Really? Yes, but that's if that's just I the, hope you got that in a safe. Uh, yeah, that's locked away in a safe. 100% yeah. that's locked away in a safe. Yeah, you do want to have a million sleeves controls. over it, a bit of plastic yeah. around it to keep it like mint. If I were to get it graded, so PSA, they use like mainly for sports cards, but nowadays everyone uses it for your Pokemon cards, your Magic Gathering, your Yu-Gi-Oh. People get them valued, and if it's like a, a 10, which is gem mint, these cards can go for thousands, tens of thousands even. Mine haven't got it PSA graded because it's actually really difficult to get them PSA graded right now. Everyone was selling their Pokemon cards, Yu-Gi-Oh cards for lockdown mm-hmm. to make a bit of money, and it just meant there's a huge backlog, a huge queue, and it's just a very difficult time to get it all graded. Mm-hmm. But yeah, for anyone who is listening, it's called 10,000 Dragon, mainly because it was the 10,000 artwork they printed, Konami, the company who make this game. So yeah, that I pulled it out of a box. The box was only worth about 60 quid, and then I pulled out a card worth. So mine's the lowest on eBay for 1,300. So, so yeah. where did you, <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you got into this game when? In my childhood, I watched a series. So, you know, Fox Kids, JX, and anyone who's a bit older will recognize them channels. You'd watch the, the cartoons, and the cartoons have the story around playing the game, you know, saving the universe because they're playing this game and it all matters. But yeah, that's how I got into it. And recently, four years ago, I discovered that a place in Croydon do local tournaments, and I started to go to there. I actually done it today, actually. That's what I've done uh, Sunday locals. You go down, you meet people, you do about four or five rounds. Better you do, you win packs. Obviously, in packs is cards worth value. Sometimes, five pound ten pound you trade them you sell them you can make money oh, so you can win you won't win someone else's cards but you win a pack yeah at the end because everyone pays to enter a tournament the top eight people may get may be getting some packs top four get a couple more number one 
maybe about five or six packs. A pack is worth about three pound each. So you will, if the better you are, the more money you make in value. And then you could pull a card worth 50, 60 quid out of one pack. You could sell it on eBay or sell that to someone who needs that for their strategy. And you can make money in that sense. It's not a suitable link income. I've got buddies who do make an income from it because they'll buy in bulk. They'll buy literally what the shops are gonna buy, that level, open it up, sell the most valuable cards, and then make profit from that, and they'll continuously regularly do that. Okay, so they've got an angle, then yeah. they can sit at home and... Quite literally, yeah. yeah. Making money of the you know, most fun game. It's amazing what people can make money out of. Yeah, well, if there's a fan base, there's an income to be made. So I've made money just from selling just odd cards here and there, you know, on eBay. You know, uh -huh. you go on eBay, anyone can post anything on eBay, maybe cost you five pound to make 30, 40 quid. You so, know. To stop people willy-nilly making these cards at home, that's where this gen testing comes in? Yes, the PSA grading is to guarantee that one, it's not a fake card, and two, that the condition of the card is pristine. So they do it in a numbers-based system, one to ten. Ten being gen mint, that means it's like, it's the perfect cut, so there was no error in the factory when it was printed and that the second you opened it out of the pack, the pack wasn't damaged on the transportation to the shop. When you opened it, you wore a glove, you didn't have any natural oils on your fingers, you <laughs> in the card, because these are things people care about. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, you've got to wear gloves. If there's money involved because natural oils will destroy it and ruin it, so you've got to take care of your cards. This is amazing, man. Yeah, people put sleeves on, everything like that. Obviously, I wasn't doing that. I, I didn't even realise I was going to get such a high value card, so I picked it up, and funny enough, I dropped it. <laughs> um, Kali, before everyone's like, what an idiot, it was literally onto a, a very thick carpet at my buddy's place. We were just like, what the hell? We saw this. We knew immediately because of the artwork and the rarity that it must be a valuable, valuable card. Oh, yeah. no, don't worry, mate. I'm having a. I don't mind an extra minute. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> do a little U turn. So I yeah. missed this, but but um, yeah. yeah and we were just we were just like, okay, let's look at the code. There's codes on the cards. Let's go on eBay, see how much they're selling for. And when we saw them four digits come through, we were like, oh my yeah, God. Lo and, and then I dropped Whoa. it. <laughs> I picked it up and immediately like just checked it because you can. After a time dealing with these things, you can look at the corners and look at the cards. You know uh. if your card's damaged or if it's not going to get the PSA grading you want. And oh. we I like, immediately, the second I saw a very thick carpet it fell on, I was like, oh, thank God. But yeah, and they always want to remind me of that as well, because obviously I've got mates who are collectors who have wanted to buy it off me at a friend's rate, but it's like, come on, when they're offering 500, it's like, you're offering less than half. Yeah. Nice try, but But, no. but if they're your mates, they shouldn't even be offering that. Well, no, because they're mates, but also £500 is a lot of money. So even though they uh, want it for collector's purposes, they're thinking, oh, uh, oh he'll, he'll do me a deal, you know, he'll sort me out. 500 no, but, no. But no, no, well, it depends how you look at it. But this has been a phenomenal seven-minute interview. Oh, thank you, thank I you. I have to say, <laughs> I will... Where can people find you if they want to get into it and they want to talk to you? If you are interested in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, either it's That's like you do friendlies, you go to small locals and you want to know how to play more competitively, anything like that. I have a YouTube channel, Eye of Magic. You can find me on YouTube, I post every Tuesday, so feel free to actually check me out. Thanks a lot for that, and we wish you well. Oh, thank you, thank you. it's been a pleasure. To the audience out there, don't forget to check out our sister podcast, Africa Investor Stories, where we interview people from around the world who have invested in Africa. Have a nice day. We hope that episode enhanced your life. We post an interview every day as well as vlogging on our social media channel. Don't forget to subscribe to get our latest episode.